Welcome to something crunchy. Tyler is homies with Blake. Blake is the older bro of Blair. Blair is married to Tyler and is a slutty slut slut. Welcome to something crunchy. What the hell is crunchy? Welcome to something crunchy. in the studio with T-Hand Touch and that don't impress B much. Let's put them up. <laughs> How are we feeling tonight? Oh, buddy, I am sold on tonight's episode. Yes. As you should be, brother. We got a solid show tonight. All three of us love this shit. We're going to have some fun getting into a little advertising. Yes, yes we are. Mostly in connection to film and television, of course. But we're going to have a little freestyle fun in a bit, giving some well-known brands a more honest marketing approach. Oh, yes. Okay. First, let's get into the very fascinating world of product placement. Oh, yes, please. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. <laughs> I can't talk about it anymore. It's giving me a headache. Here, take two of these. <laughs> ah, new print. Little, yellow, different. Look, you can stay here in the big leagues and play by the rules, or you can go back to the farm club in Aurora. It's your choice. Yes, and it's the choice of a new generation. <laughs> <laughs> Product placement is such big business that it has become an industry of its own with near $20 billion being paid to shoehorn real-world brands into the fictional worlds we see on screen. It's already becoming comparable to the $75 billion being spent in traditional TV advertising, although in one respect there's a big difference. Traditional advertising is failing. Some key figures from Bloomberg Business... 66% of viewers skip, mute, or otherwise ignore TV adverts. 90% of people watching pre-recorded media skip the ads. 78% of marketers feel that TV advertising is sharply declining. The answer? Put the ads in places where viewers can't skip them. So how much does it cost? Product integration into multiple episodes of primetime television series can cost a brand 3 to $10 million, with full series deals exceeding $50 million. Damn. Holy shit. Whoa. I mean, Whoa. wow. As for integrations into movies, you're looking at tens of millions of dollars. However, those figures are cheap compared to the 30-second ad spots on television, especially since people can tune out or skip the ads. We live in a different world now, but fun fact... The first movie to win a Best Picture Oscar, a film called Wings, was released in 1927, and it had a product placement in it for a Hershey's chocolate bar. Boom. Wow. wow. Take so that with smart. you to your next trivia night and watch the panties drop. <laughs> Hershey's has been doing it right forever. Go score some poon dropping that knowledge bomb. You're welcome. <laughs> I wanted to prove that some product placement is so strong that the brand can be tied to its film forever. And I think I found an appropriate way. What do you think? Is it smelling a little gamey in here? Ooh, oh, yeah. I sure hope so. I bet, at least for the most part, I can just name a product or brand and you can give me the movie I'm thinking of. For sure. We'll keep it just real brands, nothing fictional, and we don't need to keep score. Y'all can work together, keep it friendly. It's more or less just to prove a point. Okay. All right. I'm into it. Okay. We work together. Yeah. So I give you the brand or product. Tell me the movie it's tied to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we ready? Ready. Ready. Twinkies. Twinkies? Twinkies. Oh. Like when I say Twinkies, what's the first movie you think of? I'm flashing through every movie in my head right now. I'm seeing oh my god! You no guys, Twinkies. You guys need to no, warm up. No, I feel like I know this. Yeah, they're discussing Twinkies. They're trying uh, to find Twinkies. Oh, Zombie Land. Uh huh. Zombie. Shut. Uh, you're lying right now. No, obviously it's Zombie Land. Oh my god. Twinkies. Twinkies all over the fucking place. <laughs> zombie <laughs> Land. I was like, I swear to God, there's a movie that went like extra on the Twinkies. Nailed it. Now, yeah. that was like Twinkies. It could really only be Zombieland. Here, there's a couple of different options, but there's really only one I'm looking for. Okay. Nike. Okay. A movie with Nike specifically. Like everywhere? First movie you think of, Nike. Oh. Does it have, is it a sports movie? No. 
No. No. Because all I can think of was like Mike, a, a Spike Lee joint. That's all I was thinking. No. It's, the, there's no sports involved. Back to the Future. Oh, uh, Nike. yeah. Even made a specific Nike for it. Oh, yeah. Everyone who's seen the second installment of Back to the Future will know that Nike plays such a huge part in the setting for the future scenes for Marty McFly, yeah. who picks up a pair of self lacing Nike shoes. He pops them up, presses a button, and bam, the laces are all done up and ready to go. What's up? Fucking Nike. Kill so it. sick. It was so smooth. I was like, <laughs> didn't even catch that. All right, you see where we're going. Okay, now yeah. all right. Uh-huh. We're getting loose. prepped. Okay. I know the rules now. PF Flyers. Sandlot. Sand- oh. Thank you. The Sandlot. Okay. 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 Feeling it. I now. changed my mind. I want to keep score. It's one to one. What? I, I changed my <laughs> mind. No, I, cha- no. I completely changed my mind. This changes everything. It was supposed to be friendly, and now it's like, no, I'm in more of a competitive spirit. I appreciate you for saying that. Like, I, I changed my mind. On the same Since we're being competitive, I need name is your buzzer. <laughs> no, no, can't name is your buzzer. <laughs> you know that's not fair. To First me. two, not gonna happen. Yeah. Only what's the score? Where are we at? One one. That's always your advantage. One one. <laughs> Loving that. Okay. All right. Moving on. Uh huh. Reese's Pieces. Uh, Et. That Bam. is correct. Bam. With E.T., oh, extraterrestrial. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mars, yeah. paired company behind M&M's, was originally approached for an endorsement by E.T.'s producers, but the overlords didn't feel that the payoff would be worth it despite making the exact same mistake with Seinfeld. In a mistake it surely was, the offer of product placement was quickly snapped up by Hershey's to promote their Reese's Pieces instead, paying $1 million to have the candy featured in the movie, and for permission to use the eponymous extraterrestrial in their own advertising campaigns. It was one of the earliest large-scale and successful examples of product placement in cinema history. Hershey's saw an immediate 65% jump in profits thanks to the blockbuster success, and some marketer at Mars probably got fired. Oh. Hershey's knows what the fuck they're doing. Scooped okay. it up with the pieces. Really? <laughs> Ray Ban. And I'll accept one of two answers here. Risky business. Oh, that was dude. one of them. Wow. I was looking for Top Gun. Top Gun. Would have completely accepted risky business. Anything Either Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise was all over it. Promoted Ray-Ban products and Top Gun boosting sales of their aviator glasses by 40% after the film's release. Pretty much did the exact same thing for the Wayfarers in Risky Business. Well done, Biscuits. No, that's a full, healthy, fat, girthy chub. I yeah. Think what? Too, too. Yeah, that's like a nine-inch. Uh, no, I, I said right off the bat, I would accept okay. one of okay. two answers, and he threw out one of the two acceptable he answers. He gets his full chub. <laughs> Don't deny him a full chub. Never deny him such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue. Let's get me competitive. So much <laughs> just better. how I like it. So yep. much better. So much better. BMW Mini Cooper. Austin Powers. That's so incorrect. Are you shitting me? I'm not shitting you. I think they flashed a the the beetle. British... There's the beetle in there. No, the British flag topped Mini Cooper. No, not what we're looking for. All right, not what we're looking for. <gasps> oh. The Mini Cooper. First movie you think I of when something. you think of Mini Cooper. That isn't Austin Powers. That isn't Austin Powers. Um, I'm seeing faces, but I'm trying oh to figure man. out what it's from. The, I feel you, the listeners. The Born Identity. Oh, closer. Supremacy. Much closer. Much closer, but still no. Italian job. Fuck yeah. We'll give him half a chub for Italian job. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Did you seriously just get that? He got it. I would have never in my life got 20 that. guesses later. In the 2003 remake of The Italian Job, where Mini Coopers were used, BMW saw a sales increase of 22% over the previous year, even though the movie only saw moderate levels of success. That's nice when you can like throw in a little extra sauce and your brand goes ape shit. Sky high. And, mm. and the movie was just kind of like, good. All right. Yeah, but it was like, okay. The advertising yeah. was great. Were we at two and a half to two? Two and a half to two. It's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Wilson Sports Goods. Cast okay. away. 
and he's heating I up. I literally was like, <laughs> and he's <laughs> up. That's In line with the movie, the Wilson Sporting Goods Company created a ball, especially for the movie, which can still be bought with the face on it today. Did you know as well, one of the props that were used in the movie itself was sold to the ex-CEO of FedEx, Ken May, for $18,500. That's a pretty really? good deal. I'll say FedEx. Like, was it like that real? Fed, Fed, FedEx was another classic example. That yeah, just Probably as much as Wilson Sports was FedEx. Know, yeah, for sure. Was it actual Tom Hanks blood on the ball? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That'd be worth a lot more than eighteen k. Yeah, I was gonna for say you sure. got a great deal. Mm. Next brand, Google internship. Tyler. He's on fire. <laughs> Run down no, okay. It's like as soon as it's like boop wow. out of his mouth. He, you're taking advantage of Blair being sick. I am. It's, it's okay. okay. But I'm drunk. So You are. I didn't say there was anything wrong with that. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm going to take advantage of like her being sick later too. The Internship, okay, a movie where two middle-aged salesmen try to secure jobs at a digital Silicon Valley-style workplace that typically is full of younger generations, focuses on the Google offices. Biscuits. Nailing it with the internship. God, well done. You're really killing it right now. Yeah, I've seen that movie like 10 times well. in the last month for some reason. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I love Vince Vaughn. All right. Nokia. Mm. Phones. 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 Nokia. Old phones. Old Remy and Michelle's phones. high school reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Flip phone. <laughs> Anyone needs to make a call? I've got, got a phone. phone. <laughs> Nokia. Nokia. They didn't do it right because I can't Did remember. Breaking Bad have some like no. No. moments. The Matrix used oh, a lot God. of phones. Oh, yeah. Really All of them were from Nokia. Not get that? All yeah. of them were cool. All of them became must-have items. Nokia sold more than 8 million units of the 8110 phone used by the hacker Neo, played by Keanu Reeves. As for the sunglasses worn by the film's main characters, those were provided by Blind, a company that created designs specifically for the movie protagonist and did not start selling them until after the movie hit screens. Wow. That's pretty cool. It Lucky? Is. Like, you don't even have to go through the R&D? Just, oh, it's chill. Everybody will buy it. That's pretty cool. There's like... Third party companies specifically designed to like cater how do to we become how something crunchy sponsors the third party right. yes. <laughs> for whatever I you see need? What you're doing <laughs> like that? This one's tough. Heineken. Oh, why did something Beer come in my head for a second? No. no, something came in my head for a second of like Heineken specifically. Heineken. Heineken. I feel like there's Sounds like, like a spelling bee in here. Snatch. Heineken. H E. It's how my brain likes I. to process. <laughs> and in a spelling bee fashion, it really helps. Can you use it in a sentence, please? I feel like it was in a movie where like people specifically asked for Heineken. No? No, think, I mean, and there's and there's a few. This is tough. I wouldn't expect you to get this one, actually. Yeah. It's James Bond, specifically Skyfall. When the news broke that James Bond was set to sip from a Heineken bottle rather than the iconic martini glass in Skyfall, 007 fans got more than a little shaken. Responding to charges that the franchise had sold out to jarring product placement, wow. current Bond actor Daniel Craig simply responded, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Really? People got upset? People got really upset. God damn Danny- Fuck with the martini. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like the iconic, like... Classic. Yeah. I get it. Shaken, not stirred. Turns out there was very little to worry about when the movie was finally released. Heineken's appearance, for which they paid $45 million, was a blink and you'll miss it affair. Oh my God. Just for like a split second? Yeah, it got second. ripped off. I mean, but, Maybe the, not. but the commercials, they used them in like a lot of the commercials and I don't I'm know. I'm sure they got what they needed out of it. I, I didn't like that they fucked with the martini. You don't do that. Well, no. obviously the fans like felt some type of way about that. Don't like it. How about Chevy Camaro? Tyler. Chevy Shit. Camaro. GM, specifically Chevy Camaro. Is the it? dilemma? 
No, no that's a dodge. No, but that's, I was thinking but, but that. That's, that. That's a good guess. I liked where you were going with that. That was dodge. No, it's funny because Tyler guesses this just anytime he could possibly guess it. <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> Shit! Blair. That was the best. all she needed was a little clue yeah. for her half a chub to get right back <laughs> in. I'll take any chub I can. Let's face it. <laughs> Name of your sex tape. <laughs> Bumblebee is a walking, talking advertisement for General Motors. Son of a bitch. The character is a transforming 1976 and 2006 Chevy Camaro. What's more. Most of the other car-changing robots are also from GM, too. The Autobot version of the Chevy Camaro that has appeared in Transformers films created so much buzz that over 60,000 units were sold by the end of 2009. Everyone wanted that ugly yellow Camaro. (laughs) (laughs) It was kind of cute. It's got an LS, bro. Come on. Wow. You know what? I can't believe. Well-deserved. Half a joke. I mean, I'm still like way behind. You owed him one for like pulling all of those right out of I your brain. No, he did. As soon as it flashed in my head, he said it. Here's some low hanging fruit White Castle. Harold and Kumar. Harold and Kumar go to White yeah. Castle is correct. Harold and Kumar are hungry and decide to go to White Castle. But White <laughs> Castle is rare and hard to find. Thus goes the movie's plot. The movie contributed to increase the chain's notoriety who opened more restaurants after the movie. They had to have done well from that movie. The whole thing was solely based on going to one place, to White Castle. Like, <laughs> it said it how many times? Let me tell you how well they've done. I've gone to White Castle twice in the last uh, year and a half since they've opened. Because they opened a new one. Yeah. Right? Yep. And when I need to kill two hours. You can go stand in that line. <laughs> no, I sit in the drive through and I work in my truck. So and I get waiting. shit done. And by the time I'm like actually hungry, I've oh, heard my it's burgers the longest ready. line. I got it once through DoorDash and it was so horrible. I will never get it again. DoorDash, you're better off. The freezer at CVS. So bad. You're better off going to the gas station, picking it up, microwaving it yourself. It tastes the exact same. Still bad. Still bad. <laughs> All the same kind of bad. It's really of advertising. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one up. Okay. What's count player? Five and a half, Tyler, to my two and a half. Oh. Uh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. I hop. Oh shit! I hop. I hop. Like First movie, movie you think of? Uh, Man of Steel. Ah, Man of Steel is correct. Are you serious? Or not now? even the DCEU is safe from deliberate product placement. In Man of Steel, the son of L seems to enjoy fighting around I hop like all over the International House of Pancakes. <laughs> it paid handsomely to be in some Superman. Well done. I hop's always gonna do well. This is a tough one. Converse. Ooh, I'm glad you said PS Flyers first. Mm-hmm. It's no, not, not Hoosiers. Not Hoosiers. not sports. Hmm. Will Smith. Men in Black. No, but fuck, not a oh, bad guess. What's the um? Mm. Who is it? Uh-oh. The movie where he's by himself and the dog. I am Legend. Yes. Yeah. Really? Oh, <laughs> stop. Like, can I just? I am Legend. I did it. <laughs> Ali. No. Fuck. No sports. Did he do any that wasn't sports? Oh, where he was. Um... <sighs> Fuck. I- iRobot is famous for its over-the-top product placement sprinkled liberally throughout the movie from brands like Audi, FedEx, and JVC. But it was the outrageously unsubtle and repeated references to Will Smith's vintage Converse All-Stars that stuck in most viewers' minds. Oh, they, like, mentioned it multiple times? Well, and he had this, like, unboxing scene that was, like, just obnoxiously... Just like, focused on the converse. We get it. It was a commercial. Converse. It was a <laughs> yeah. commercial in the middle. We of the see movie. you. Yeah, it was. iRobot also achieved something of a first in product placement history. As far as we know, it was the first movie in which a car was specifically designed for product placement within a movie. The Audi RSQ concept car was made with iRobot in mind, and according to the Audi AG, the project was a success in terms of raising positive brand awareness. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Barbasol. Shaving. Barbasol. 
first oh, movie you think of? Um, Fantastic Four. No. No. Hold on. I'm thinking... Um, Pretty Woman. Uh, no. no. You're thinking... No. Um... Matthew, uh, Matthew no, Broderick. No, oh. no, not even close. No, Damn. you're thinking Ferris Bueller. I and was no, not no. even close. No, no. What you should be thinking of is Jurassic Park. Barbasol Damn. can't. Shit. Oh, come on. Come on, you guys. Of course. Come on, get it together. I fucking should have remembered that. Huh? Head and shoulders. Head and shoulders. Tough. Shower. Twister. Shower. No. <laughs> no. Evolution. Shampoo once saved the universe. At least that's what evolution had us believe. Head and shoulders. Wouldn't have gotten that. Wow, that's tough. I'm sure they didn't sell any more shampoo after that. Yeah. How do you attempt. sell that into the movie? Like, this shampoo will save the fucking world. <laughs> Head and shoulders. How do you feel about it? Head and shoulders. Can you work that into your film? Okay. Domino's or Pizza Hut? Either one. Oh. Ninja Turtles? Wow. <laughs> that's really? correct. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are famous for their love of pizza. It only makes sense that an advertiser would want their product to be the turtle's choice of pizza. Pizza of choice? They're POC. While the <laughs> 90s turtles preferred Domino's pizza, yeah. the 2014 characters got their pizza from the hut. I know. My fucking Ninja Where? Turtles. Wow. Whoa. Score, please. You do kind of look like April O'Neil. Yeah, you got a... You think? Yeah, you got like a real O'Neil thing going on uh tyler's still up five and a half to my three and a half but okay. it's not mm-hmm. that She's big of a deficit two. right now it's a good score all right i don't love it but i don't hate it a couple more blockbuster 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 i feel the, like it's the, like a the like wizard a superhero movie or mm. like a Ooh. um on the right track i'm seeing it i'm seeing, I'm seeing it um um captain marvel <laughs> Jet. The opening sequence of Captain Marvel, she busts through the roof of Blockbuster, immediately providing the oh, setting yeah. with a side dish of heavy nostalgia. It was all <laughs> downhill from there. Terrible movie, but nice pickup B. Love the Blockbuster. Oh, damn. Wow. Coming back. Okay. Coming back. Okay. Five and a half to four and a half? Yes. Ooh, a couple more. One point game. Circle K. Bill and Ted's. Strange things are afoot. <laughs> Circle K. Of course. Wow. I say that twice a week. <laughs> Biscuits showing his dominance. Audi. We've already mentioned movies yeah. with it, but. We've already mentioned movies with it. That was more of the fun fact adding to iRobot. Iron Man. Bam! That's what? it. Shazam. For sure. The, the R8. first movie you think of when you think of Audi yeah. should be Iron Man. He, Throughout the I films, like Iron Man's suits have evolved, and due to Audi's consistent involvement in the technology behind the film, so have Tony's cars. Nailed it. Wow. With the good Iron one. Man. Slam. Slam. All right. So I got, but I do have one bonus. One bonus. How, how, how far are you behind? Two. Two. Three. <laughs> Make this for the one three pointer. For the win. Worst, worst you can do is tie. Daisy's Red Ryder BB gun. Christmas story. Nailed it. I wanted to say vacation. It's the story. Wow. You'll shoot your eye out, wow. motherfucker. Wow. That was so fast. <sighs> well, Biscuits just took care of business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Man. Mean... Tyler didn't win a lot of games around here. I am so happy for him. <laughs> that is exciting. I do not play. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Hold no, on. You won a lot. Actually, this season, I think you're, you've you won all the games. Three for four, Ever at since least. the porn sewed, he's been on like quite the street. Yeah. You can't even compare the porn sewed. Don't he, let me into my zone. He was a <laughs> god among men for the porn sewed. <laughs> no, a man really amongst were. boys. Yeah, that was. <laughs> don't mess with biscuits in the porn sewed. <laughs> no. I'm eager to get back into it. And when we do, we're not beating around the bush. I wonder why we say that. Funny you should ask. Let's talk about a father-son duo that host a new podcast called Why Do We Say That, where they look into why we say certain phrases in our everyday lexicon without really knowing where they come from. Everyone likes saying things like paint the town red or got his bell rung, and these guys will make you laugh while teaching you the origins of these common phrases. New episodes are released every Tuesday and are available wherever you get your podcasts. Go fuel up for your next trivia night and learn Why Do We Say That.
Hey guys, thanks for listening to Something Crunchy, and I hope you're enjoying the episode. It now pays to crunch down every week because we're hooking you up with big discounts from big brands. Up to 35% off Invicta watches using code CRUNCHY and apparel from 8080. Where in addition to 10% off using code CRUNCHY, every dollar you spend goes toward an entry into the Dream Car Giveaway. Don't forget to join the Something Crunchy Facebook group for updates, polls, and the web's crunchiest memes. You can find us on Twitter at crunch underscore cast. And feel free to send any questions in your track submissions to somethingcrunchy at gmail.com. Now, let's get back to the show. Stuff. Congratulations, Biscuits. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. Well played. I want to move right along into like another exercise, if you will. <laughs> okay. okay. More of an exercise, less of a game. This is something Biscuits and I do just in the car regularly. We'll call it honest advertising. Mm. This is just yeah. if ads were brutally honest about their brands. Ooh. <laughs> so I'm yeah. just, oh, God. I'm just going to throw out some everyday names. And we'll see if we can rework some realistic advertising in the future. <laughs> we'll just have some fun with it. I okay. may do it. Like, I'll throw out an example. Let's bust up chilies. That seems... Chilies, okay. Let's work with chilies. Sure. All right. Chilies. Because your family's better than Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> really turfing it up tonight. Chilies. You can easily find a better restaurant, but you won't find a louder one. <laughs> <laughs> See where I'm going with this? I like that. Oh, no. I'm loving where this is heading. Chilies. We got screens for your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Chilies. We serve every menu item in the world, except chili. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Totally. <laughs> Well, I think there's like chili in their queso. They're like not known for their chili. Have you ever fucking gotten chili at Chili's? Of course not. Not once. <laughs> no. Never. You tell me if you have. <laughs> Chili's. We're close to the mall. You can walk it off. <laughs> you can walk it off. <laughs> Let's move on to McDonald's. Easy. Oh, Low hanging fruit. Easy. Easy. McDonald's. Yeah, the rumors are true. Go make fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. People are still eating it. <laughs> it's got to be good. <laughs> McDonald's, now with white meat chicken. Don't ask what you've been eating for the last 25 years. <laughs> Seriously. New and improved. I hate when they say now with white meat chicken. Ugh. Like, don't. Like, I've only been eating that for two decades. What the fuck have I been eating? <laughs> <laughs> now with white meat chicken. McDonald's giving your kids ringworm from all of our playgrounds <laughs> since 1977. <laughs> Come on down to McStain, where everything tastes exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No matter the menu item, like their fish sandwich tastes exactly like their burger. It's just, it all tastes exactly the same. Different textures. McDonald's. The smell never goes away. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, come in, hang out. You recognize the smell. <laughs> It'll never the leave you. The smell never leaves you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. Uh, how about Long John Silver? Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Definitely looks like fish. <laughs> <laughs> At least our bathrooms are locked. <laughs> Long John Silver, now made with real fish parts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's drugs in our parking lot. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> you can guarantee it. <laughs> we don't sell math, but you can find as much as you want. In the lot. <laughs> Long John Silver's. Long John Silver, when you're in the mood for a bad fish cleanse. <laughs> John, Long John Silver, when I need to lose 15 pounds. <laughs> Can't find mushrooms? Trip your balls on Long John Silver. <laughs> About Old Navy. Oh, man. <laughs> God. Where you can be cheap and ordinary too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Even their basics are basic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the half off rack is still only four ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> Old Navy, we're not special, but neither are you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be bored as soon as you walk in. <laughs> Need something for the day? Old Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Old 
baby, you were nothing fucking fizz. <laughs> 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 Ugh, I'm having fun. That's okay. good. Right. That's we're, 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 we're warming up. That's we're good. warming up. Yeah. All right. Let's get more personal here. Uh, see a white claw on the desk. Bl- Blair's drinking a neck of claw. <laughs> that should be easy to make fun of. <laughs> white claw. We convinced you it's good. Sold <laughs> <laughs> me. What can I say? White claw. We're the first uh, new generation. <laughs> Supporting underage drinking since 2016. <laughs> <laughs> hate the taste of beer? White Claw. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of a hangover, you'll just hate your life now. <laughs> White Claw. <laughs> Don't wait till tomorrow to hate your life. Drink a White Claw. <laughs> if you throw up a mango White Claw fast enough, you'll get a grapefruit White Claw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> White Claw, because it's easier to ask the bum down the street to buy you a White Claw than it is a case of beer. (laughs) How about KFC? Oh, God. That's going to be easy. (laughs) Fuck the diet trend. Come get your bucket, you fat piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I think every time I see a commercial. It's like, God, nothing will make you feel fatter as fuck than watching a KFC commercial. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing worse than our food is our commercials. (laughs) It's terrible. (laughs) Come on down to KFC and get yourself some skin and biscuits. Terrible ads. KFC, we didn't really feel the need to compete in the chicken sandwich war, but we did make a chicken sandwich with pieces of fried chicken used in place of the buns. <laughs> Just a handful of fucking chicken, basically. <laughs> chicken on fucking chicken. Who needs bread? The double you stack. Have more chicken? <laughs> Unbun your double stack. <laughs> <laughs> Where your fat will feel fat. <laughs> KFC. Oh KFC, because we can't legally call it chicken. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> How about IKEA? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Swedish for 10,000 pieces. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I say. Like, Swedish for uh, some assembly required. <laughs> Come for the meatballs, stay for the furniture. <laughs> When your new dresser arrives in a shoebox, it's from <laughs> Ikea. <laughs> do not look right. Ikea, we make great pictures of products. <laughs> <laughs> Ikea, where you can start to build your own furniture. <laughs> Ikea, that studio apartment won't decorate itself. <laughs> <laughs> Ikea, you'll never have to move our furniture because it's disposable. (laughs) It's disposable. (laughs) Let's go with a dying brand here. How about Redbox? Got to be on their last leg. Oh, man. Redbox. Does anyone still use it? (laughs) Redbox serving the last 6,000 with a DVD player. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Redbox, you won't even be able to play our movies. Redbox, forget to pay your cable bill. (laughs) Redbox, just keep it when you're done. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing will spice up your night like a red box. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Looking for something from four years ago? Red box. Let's do Taco Bell. Oh, oh man. Let's, please. Or fake cheese is preferred. No one ever cared that it's on fake meat. <laughs> <laughs> Uproar about the fake cheese. You've been eating fake meat yeah. this entire time. The company yeah. lost millions when they went to real cheese. You don't fuck with my Nobody cheese. Nobody blinks an eye at that fucking powdered beef they use. <laughs> Taco Bell, you're not sure which end it came out of. <laughs> Tastes the same at the front or the back. <laughs> Taco Bell, where $20 is treated like the golden ticket that gets you into Willy Wonka's Taco Factory. <laughs> You've unlocked the magic box. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Taco Bell, where Diablo sauce improves your chances for successful digestion. <laughs> 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 Let's it all go down. Oh, that's good. The last place to find the Baja Blast. <laughs> Taco Bell. What about DoorDash? Fucking DoorDash. Your slop is at the door, you fat little pig. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Feeding time. DoorDash. <laughs> DoorDash, colder food at higher prices. Yeah. <laughs> DoorDash, it may not be fast or even your food, but it's delivery. 
<laughs> so we got that going for us, which is nice. DoorDash, you'll probably always get a refund. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going to fuck up. DoorDash. Because you thought fast food was lazy. DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you can get fast food delivered, that's just sad. DoorDash. <laughs> Let's talk about Airbnb. Ooh. Oh, okay. Looking the other way for over 10 years. <laughs> oh, my God. Right? <laughs> Airbnb, we won't ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> Why host fetish night at your own house when there's Airbnb? <laughs> <laughs> Airbnb, we'll send the cleanup crew in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Airbnb, come on everything. I mean, come on over. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't breathe. Uh, how about Ross? Oh, God, Ross. <laughs> I want to give it to Ross. Ross. Flip for more. Disposable wear. <laughs> yeah. Good for one use. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Welcome to Knock Off Depot. If your logo isn't stitched crooked, get your money back. <laughs> Welcome to Stains R Us here at Ross. <laughs> the only thing worse than our quality is the selection. <laughs> Ross, we're basically Goodwill. <laughs> your, ne- your next step to Goodwill. <laughs> Pretty much. Looking for a sweet discount? We're hiring here at Ross. <laughs> what about Jack in the Box? Ooh, Jack in the Box. You know that they're missing the ad game. Jack in the Box. Thank God for our tacos. (laughs) Our strongest formula yet. (laughs) (laughs) Our mystery tacos that nobody asks about. If it wasn't for liquor licenses, we'd be fucked. (laughs) Jack in the Box. Are you drunk enough to Jack? (laughs) (laughs) That is perfect. Yeah. I sh- I don't know how many I can that find that actually line. had Jack in the Box mm-hmm. sober. Are you drunk enough to Jack? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a very smart advertisement. It's not that. bad. They should just really embrace it. Jack Damn. in the Box, the most thrown up food in the country. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank God Jay and the Bee is 24-7. <laughs> so we wouldn't survive. They do most of their business between the hours of 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. <laughs> Midnight and 6, I was going to say. How about Amazon? Oh, we can Amazon. go to town on Amazon. Where you can buy a dildo, snacks, and a leash for chickens all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> Same cart. Yeah. That's tough to do. Add to cart. <laughs> That's tough to do. Amazon. It doesn't fit, but you'll get it today. <laughs> <laughs> Flip the script and do Walmart. <laughs> Walmart, where everything's a piece of shit. Yeah. Walmart, nothing makes you appreciate Target more than from Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. Walmart, what's worse, our items or our customers? <laughs> Walmart, cheaper than therapy. <laughs> the prices are low. The people watching is free. <laughs> we all know that's why. Or you can say the prices are low and the people are high. <laughs> Down at Walmart. <laughs> Walmart, if you're dressed, you're overdressed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. (sighs) Want to see some strippers and I'd have to pay for it? Walmart, (laughs) after midnight. All right, let's get a couple more. I want to go something online. How about like a custom ink? (laughs) Custom ink, okay. Yeah. If you take a shit, we'll find a way to slap a logo on it. Yeah. (laughs) Custom ink. <laughs> now putting logos on logos. <laughs> <laughs> Your stickers. You can have stickers of logos. <laughs> Custom ink. It's a good thing no one else is doing this yet. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Supplying the back of your closet with conference swag for 10 years. <laughs> 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 Want to give people shit they'll never use? Custom ink. <laughs> what about the North Face? Oh, man. Come on. Serving the everyday man oh. as long as you have a shit ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Like, What's the North Face? The North Face? The only thing uglier than our clothes is our prices. North Face <laughs> for fraternities only. Yeah. You're going to hate the way you look. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you're going to ruin a bunch of clothes for camping, at least pay too much for them. <laughs> North Face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finish strong. Let's do Arby's. Oh, yeah. Arby's. Is it beef? <laughs> Arby's. We know. We know. <laughs> we know. Arby's. Ar- just don't ask. <laughs> Arby's. At least we started making other sandwiches too. <laughs> True. Arby's, where our logo looks like a dong and our sandwiches look like vag meat. <laughs> Arby's, where our tagline is the best thing about us. <laughs> we got the beef. Where Ving Rames adds the most value to <laughs> corporation <laughs> well, let's close the meat curtains there with end on arby's <laughs> we've had that's enough good. that's let's good go ahead and yeah. tap out all i think about when i think of arby's is meat hooks <laughs> i'm gonna be we, thinking about these all the time now quality stuff i like the game and then i like our uh i like our transition into our own ads there of well, course well done um, let's move on into, we, we got to do our top movies and shows for the marketing and advertising oh, genre. Okay. Definitely. Not getting out of here without the top movies and shows. Obviously, I think the first one that you think of for movies, at least for me, is The Joneses. The Joneses? 2009, The Joneses. Yes. It's got to be. David Duchovny. Yeah. Right? Demi Moore, mm-hmm. a seemingly perfect family moves into a suburban neighborhood, but when it comes to the truth as to why they're living there, they don't exactly come clean with their neighbors. Spoiler alert, they're paid by a secret marketing company that hires fake families to invade suburbia and influence the area with the coolest new gadgets, toys, cars, and apparel in the efforts to spike sales for the brands that pay them. It's fucking nuts. It gets super dark and sits atop our selection of the best advertising flicks. No, I agree. When I first watched that, I was like, this is so fucking well done. And now we have like Instagram influencers. Yeah, this is the first the, movie about influencers. all of that. Like, mm-hmm. This is precursor to that. That was awesome. No, I loved how they did it. Well done. If you haven't seen it, what's the matter with you? Okay. Uh, greatest movie ever sold for 2011. Gotta be on there. Documentary, same guy that did uh, Super Size Me. Oh, okay. A documentary about branding, advertising, and product placement that is financed and made possible by brands, advertising, and product placement. Oh. Morgan so, Spurlock. Yeah, it's like the the it's like Palm presents greatest movie ever sold. So like yeah, that that was a cool one. Wow, it's like all about the subject matter. Mad Men first show that you think has of. to be on the list. Obviously, obviously. Mad Men. come on. From 2007 to 2015, a drama about New York's most prestigious ad agencies at the beginning of the 60s, focusing on one of the film's most mysterious but extremely talented ad executives, Don Draper. So cute. (laughs) Johnny Ham. Thank you for smoking, 2005. Love it. Satirical comedy follows Big Tobacco's chief spokesman, Nick Naylor, who spins on behalf of cigarettes while trying to remain a role model for his 12-year-old son. Got to be on there. Marlboro Man. No, it was um, so good. And how, like, the nicotine fat and, like, the, how the whole movie did it. I mean, the conversations between the alcohol lobbyist, the tobacco lobbyist, and the, and the firearm lobbyist. Oh, that's like the best part. funniest shit I've ever seen. Best yeah, part. that was the best part. Well done. What women want has to be part of the conversation. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. From DRA strips and shit. Yeah. Nick Marshall. <laughs> Playboy and hotshot in advertising thinks he's God's gift to women. After a little accident, he discovers that he's suddenly able to hear what women really think. Cheesy, outdated rom-com? Yes, but... <laughs> About advertising. Solid movie yeah. on advertising. Good admin. Stealing gotta, Helen gotta Hunt shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oldie but a goodie. Crazy people, 1990, has to be on there. Uh, Emery works in advertising and is beginning to crack. His latest idea is honesty. It's Volvos. Yes, they are boxy, but they're safe. This doesn't go down too well with the boss, so Emery is sent back to a psychotic hospital to recover. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the office, Emery's work is accidentally sent to the printers. His ads are a huge success, but now Emery has fallen for Kathy, another patient, and he didn't even want to fucking leave. <laughs> just be crazy in love together. Send me my check. I'll so be he, here in the loony bin. His honest Dang ad it. for Volvo turned into a huge success that's Damn. cool but he didn't want to leave 
Boomerang, 1992, Eddie Murphy. So good. Marcus is a successful advertising executive who woos and beds women almost at will. After a company merger, he finds that his new boss, the ravishing Jacqueline, is treating him in the exact same way. Completely traumatized by this, his work goes badly downhill. Then when Jacqueline's more quietly attractive assistant, Angela, who has been dating Marcus's best friend, shows herself more than a little concerned by his parlous state. That was pretty good. Again, an oldie but a goodie. It fits. Our zone. I also included the founder in this list. 2016. Oh, yeah. Michael Mickey Keaton's. Mickey it's D. like the story behind McDonald's. Michael Keaton. Yeah. It's the true story of Ray Kroc and like, you know, the struggling salesman and how he. No, that was perfect for those. I sees agree. McDonald's and turns it into what it is. And like, that's good. Got to throw another rom-com in here. How to lose a guy in 10 days. Oh. 2003. I mean. Frost, frost yourself. yourself. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Benjamin Barry is an advertising executive and ladies' man who, to win a big campaign, bets that he can make a woman fall in love with him in 10 days. Yeah, that was all right. It's about 40 minutes too long. Y'all would be with, upset with us if we didn't have it on there. I didn't yeah. have it on there. <laughs> and we're going to round it up with Art and Copy from 2009. Hate advertising? Make better ads, says Doug Prey, the director of Art and Copy. This was good. Whoa. Like, it ties in this? everything we're talking about. A documentary that focuses on the positive impact advertising can have on our culture. Highlights the great creative minds behind truly memorable and socially uplifting ads like the Just Do It, I Love New York, Think Different campaigns. Really good. It's cool. Cool interviews. Ooh, I love that. And just for close friend of the show and previous guest, Connie Hoy, we got to have an honorable mention for Bosom Buddies. Yeah, her, nice. her Tom Hanks show that she loved from 1980 <laughs> to 1982. Yeah. There you go, Connie. <laughs> there you go. Let's move on to our track of the week. This one just hits me in the right spot. So up our alley. I mean, I could just peel back the layers of influences I hear, and it's good stuff. Best band name yet, too. Out of Junction City, Kansas, this is Diabolical Orange Monkey with Don't Wanna Be. <laughs> no sympathy for the devil. Keep that in mind. Buy the ticket, take the ride. If occasionally it gets a little heavier than you would have had in mind, we'll chalk it up to force consciousness, expansion. Tune in, freak out, get beaten.
right. That is a crunchy jam and a quality track. Thank you, Diabolical Orange Monkey. <laughs> Good. It's a great name for a band. <laughs> it is. Fun fact that they want you to know is that they did not name this band after a former president. Apparently, they get that a lot. But they do have not one, but two redheads in the group who they call their Diabolical Orange Monkeys. <laughs> Thank Love you for it. the submission, guys. And you can check out the video for Don't Want to Be and other tracks by Diabolical Orange Monkey on the tube. Keep on sending those track submissions to somethingcrunchy at gmail.com. The crunchier, the better, of course. The deadline to enter for the 8080 Dream Car giveaway number 44 for a McLaren 600 LT and $60,000 cash is coming up on May 2nd. Boom. For a limited time, they're offering double the entries, meaning every dollar spent is equal to two dragons. Ooh. Even if they weren't hooking you up with the very real opportunity to win awesome cars and lots of cash, I'd still say go check out 8080 and buy at least one shirt or a pair of sweats. So, Tyler and I live in that shit. Yeah. It's quality, comfortable, Bomb. and you get a discount just for being a part of Crunch Nation. Use code CRUNCHY when checking out. You'll be glad you did. Don't forget to hit up somethingcrunchy.com where every episode awaits, along with our links for social media and, of course, the Crunch Store where you can merch out and buy some Blair's feet pics. <laughs> if you buy a right foot and a heel at full price she'll hook up lefty completely naked at half price You're that's welcome. a steal <laughs> between the toes there's never a dull moment in that something crunchy facebook group check it out if you're looking for those dank memes we've got a heady stash in there come back for a big one next week we got another fun and exciting guest calling in and you do not want to miss it this has been another episode of Something Crunchy. And as always, don't ever forget to live your crunchiest life. And be crunchy to one another. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and all that crunchy good shit. Thank you for listening. There's like a lippy pussy joke here somewhere. It's got meat curtains written all over it. Does. It does. I'll take... Any chub I can. Name me your sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk for shit. I plan for the other episode.